JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for October the 8th. I am Harold Lambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained only versus uh, the yen and the kiwi, while it underperformed the most versus SEC, NOG and the Canadian dollar in that order. The weakening of the dollar and the yen suggests uh, that investors' appetite improved again at some point yesterday. That said, the weakening of the kiwi points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU indices uh, traded uh, mixed, finishing their session within a 0.40% uh, range. However, market participants decided to increase their risk exposure during the US session, with Wall Street's uh, main indices gaining on average 1.84% each. Appetite uh, softened again during the Asian session. Japan's Nikkei 225 and South Korea's KOSPI gained uh, 0.92 and uh, 0.46% uh, respectively, but Hong Kong's uh, Hang Seng fell uh, 0.86%. Uh, Chinese markets uh, stayed closed in celebration of the National Day. Now, after calling off uh, negotiations with Democrats over a fresh stimulus package, US President Trump urged Congress to provide checks for Americans and other support for airlines and small, and small businesses, reviving hopes that at least a partial, uh, partial deal could happen ahead of uh, the November 3rd uh, US election. With uh, investors cheering uh, the prospect of uh, some stimulus, the minutes of the latest FOMC meeting passed uh, largely unnoticed. Just for the record, the minutes revealed that in August, officials agreed unanimously on a new approach to monetary policy, but they were divided in September over how to apply the new principles in uh, practice. Having said all that, despite equities rebounding again, and even if they continue traveling north for a while more, we will stick to our day-by-day -day approach. With coronavirus cases keep rising at a fast pace and the US elections uh, getting closer, we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery. For now, hopes for uh, partial uh, standalone stimulative bills in the US may keep investors' uh, morale supported for a while more. Equities and other risk-linked assets may gain more while safe havens could stay under uh, pressure. In the currency world, this means that um, pairs consisting of a risk-linked currency and a safe haven may perform better than others. Such pairs are Aussie Yen and Aussie Dollar. Under normal circumstances, we would include uh, QE yen and QE dollar as choices, but the latest weakness in the QE due to headlines surrounding the RBNZ policy make us cautious on that front. Overnight, uh, reports hit the wires that an RBNZ official said that the bank is actively working on negative interest rates, with another policymaker saying that they would rather do too much too soon than uh, too little too late, confirming that they are looking at the prospect of a negative rates plan. Although the RBNZ has already signaled that negative interest rates are a tool available to be used in, 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 in case further stimulus is needed, uh, direct, uh, direct talk on that front makes uh, the case even more likely and increases the chances for uh, such a move to take place at one of the upcoming RPNZ gatherings. Now at, uh, for today's events, uh, today we get uh, more minutes, this time from the ECB. At the prior ECB meeting, uh, policymakers kept monetary policy untouched, reiterating that they stand ready to adjust all their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves uh, towards its aim in a sustained manner. 
Now bearing in mind that the preliminary PMIs and CPIs for September disappointed, we will scan the minutes for clues as to how willing officials are, are to ease their policy further in the months to come. With regards to the economic indicators, Germ Germany's trade balance for August and the US initial jobless claims for last week are coming out. The German surplus is, is expected to have risen somewhat to 18.2 billion euros from 18 uh, billion euros, while the US jobless claims are forecast to have uh, decreased to 820,000 from 837,000. We also have six, six uh, speakers on today's agenda, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem, ECB Vice President uh, Luis de Quintos, ECB Executive Board Member Isabel Schnabel, ECB Executive Board Member Yves Merch, and the Richmond uh, Fed President Thomas Barkin. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.